What is up guys? My name is Pussy Pussy and today we are talking about the MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch. Now this video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X, which is basically an all-in-one platform in order to clean, protect, and speed up your Mac, but more on that later. Now laptops are huge for me because majority of the times I'm on the go. Now you see my commute's about 2.5 hours door to door anytime I go to work. So if I'm commuting on the train or on the bus and there's 2.5 hours to spare, that's pretty much what I'm editing. So that's how I'm able to balance both a full-time job and YouTube. So a lot of my editing happens on the go. And that's why it is the center of my entire editing station. Even when I'm home, I come dock it to that monitor back there that you see, right? And I've done a desk setup video. If you wanna see, I'll link it up here again. So needless to say, I was super excited when the rumors of the 16 inch MacBook Pro came out. You see, I started editing on the Surface Pro and then I switched to the Razer Blade 14 because I wanted to game and edit a little bit. And then eventually I switched to the MacBook Pro because I switched from Premiere Pro to Final Cut. And if you're editing on Final Cut, you need a Mac. And I got the base model, like, like the touch bar base model. So this was like base specs, you know, like no upgrades, no nothing. It was like, I think somewhere like, it was 256 GB. And considering the fact that I do video editing and photo editing, I, yeah, like 256 GB was the dumbest thing I've, I've like ever done. And that's where the new MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch comes in. Now, I'm not gonna bore you guys with all like, oh, this is new, that is new, because I'm sure if you're looking at this video, you've probably already seen videos on the MacBook Pro before, so you know what's new, what's not. Now, don't get me wrong, the 2016 MacBook Pro, other than the memory option that I spec'd it out with, everything else was, it was good. It, it got the job done. But what ends up happening is as you start making more videos, you wanna improve on so many different aspects of things. So I started shooting in 4K. I started shooting in two by one aspect ratio. I started shooting in hybrid log gamma. So now my videos are in HDR when I'm editing. Um, so these little, little changes, and then I start putting a lot more effects in there. I start color grading more heavily, color correcting, this, that. So one thing leads to another and Basically, my computer was not crippled, but in order for it to function and in order for me to edit, I had to like set the settings to like absolute base. I had to, first of all, I had to transcode all my media into proxy. Um, so I'm already editing in low quality, then I'm editing in like high performance mode with low quality output. And even then I would stutter, like because it was 4K footage, anytime I would put in like stabilization or any effects, then I would get like stuttering and uh, it, it would just lag up my computer. And as you can tell this entire spec bump upgrade has me so freaking excited because it has completely changed the game of how I edit. Now, anywhere from transcoding to ProRes 422, to rendering out, to adding effects and doing other manipulations and color grading and color correction, it's all butter. Like it literally cuts through it with no headaches, no issues. Okay, so you're probably wondering, Tosif, like you keep talking about the MacBook Pro 2016, we get it, like it's a big upgrade for you, but what about the rest of the market? How does the MacBook Pro 16 inch compare to the other PCs and desktops and all that other stuff out there? Is it priced fairly? Tell me more about the market. I don't know much about PCs and that's just an area that I'm just starting to learn and just starting to get to know. So you know, I thought, you know what? Why don't we go talk to an expert? There is an expert whom we all may know who is commonly referred to as, by myself of course, as the big Papa Bless of Canada. So without further ado, let's go ascertain his services. Okay, Tosif, catch. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this guy that we're gonna go see right now is a genius, like a computer genius. Super nice guy, by the way. Okay, it looks like it'll take me about 47 minutes to get there. Okay, so I'm here. All you gotta, okay, let's not show any house details. Holy, this neighborhood. Okay, let's go in. All right. Okay, we're good to go. Good to go. Man, the sound here is so nice. The I sound know. panels and everything. A lot of blankets and sound yeah. panels. Yeah. Okay, so I'm here to see Big Papa Bless of Toronto, <laughs> Matthew Moniz. Ma am I saying that right? Yeah. Matthew? Matthew, Matthew. Moniz, Moniz, everyone says it differently, but I'm cool with it. Okay, how do you say it? 
Oh man, I say Moniz, but it's not Moniz? actually not okay. so, it's actually like Muniz, but no one says it like that. Yeah. Okay, so that that's like the proper. You actually got it more proper than most Moniz. people. Moniz. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Matthew Moniz. <laughs> I'm not Italian, <laughs> but it's fine. But you just gotta do this. <laughs> yeah, if you're Italian. This. Yeah, right? if you're Italian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. First of all, I guess to start off. What are your general thoughts on the actual MacBook Pro and wh what do you think about it and how is it positioned in the market? So I think this is like a big step for Apple. Like what ha what's happened over the last five years, there's all these like little problems and it kind of resulted in a lot of people holding off. But this was like the year where they started listening to their consumers and prosumers and they kind of went back and like fixed everything. The keyboard, mm -hmm. they improved things we didn't expect, they fixed thermal issues. It's better, it's not perfect, but it's like significantly better than previous generations. And when you put all those things together, they, it just creates a product that people are attracted to, people want it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we finally have with the MacBook Pro 16. Um, so like for example, the, the 2019 MacBook, like the one just before this, the earlier one, you know, they, they, they kind of try to fix thermals by using like a bandage approach or okay. a band-aid approach, which is basically called undervolting. And mm -hmm. when you undervolt the CPU, it means you're giving the CPU less power. And by giving it less power, it can run with faster clock speeds for a longer period of time. It still ran too hot, but okay. it was kind of like a, a stop gap until they kind of could fix the thermals like they did in the Pro 16. Interesting, okay. Um, now, in terms of the actual laptop, now, compared to the market, what would be the closest competitor to this, let's say, in the Windows front? So, a lot of people might disagree or, dis or not agree on this because there's so many Windows laptops to choose from, but I think if you're thinking of, like, the the light performance-based laptops, which are like under five pounds. Yeah. The competitors would be like the Dell XPS 15, okay. the Lenovo X1 Extreme Gen 2, um, and the Asus ZenBook Pro. Asus ZenBook Pro? Is that the one <clears> like, that has like two screens or something? So that would probably be, I mean, that that's more powerful, but that's, okay. I would say that's out of, that, that's not the same competition just because like it's a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. It's using like a very powerful RTX card, which draws a lot more power. Mm -hmm. I would say like the Dell XPSs, the X1 Extremes, the Asus ZenBook Pro, um, who else makes it? The HP Spectre 15, there's a version that's, you know, aimed towards this category. Okay. Those would be its competition. And I actually did a video comparing this to the X1 Extreme Gen 2. Oh, yeah. And um, the differences are significant. Like, I found this to offer better performance, better battery life, but the X1 Extreme to offer more expandability and upgradability down the road. You so can it's actually, not like soldered down. Exactly. Like it's not soldered down. You have the ability to open it up, yeah. change out the hard drives. You can even change the Wi-Fi card if you want, and it's a very easy process. <laughs> this, you buy it. However it is, you're, yeah. you're stuck with it. That's it, right? Yeah. So there's some people who hate that. There's others who don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. a lot of people who buy Mac products just don't care. Like they just, they buy it, they use it for six or seven years, yeah. they buy something else, right? Yeah. Just depends what, what type of person are you. Do you like to tinker? Do you want to have some future proofness? Then mm -hmm. you, you decide between those two different formats. Th okay. Then of course the debate whether you like Windows or Mac, right? That's the yeah. other thing too. And I guess since we're talking about like XPS 15 and all these other, other laptops, um, how do you think this is priced in that category? Do you think for the specs Ooh. that they're offering, it's fairly priced? Because, I mean, there's a lot of talk about how, like, people are, a lot of people are saying that it's priced a lot better compared to prior year. Now, is it just because in the previous years it was already overpriced a little bit, so now they kind of made it a little bit? Well, I mean, generally, Macs have always been priced higher, <clears throat> at least in the laptop market, have been priced yeah. higher than their PC counterparts. The reason why this year people were excited was because they didn't raise the price. They didn't mm -hmm. raise the price. Uh, I think with the base model, they offered one terabyte mm -hmm. instead of 512, so people were happy yeah. about that. So when you have, like, no movement there and you're expecting to be movement, you know, you kind of get a little happy on the Mac side, right? Yeah, but in terms of price comparison to something that's equally specced on the PC world, you're looking at about like a seven to eight hundred dollar difference. You know, like oh, a wow. similarly spec Lenovo machine yeah. or Dell XPS 15, you mm -hmm. can save anywhere from seven to nine hundred dollars depending on discounts and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, like, you know, my MacBook that I have costed like, I don't know, I think it was like five grand Canadian, which is yeah. like <laughs> probably a probably like dollar American, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Lenovo co equivalent was like, Seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah. So that that that. But the thing is, like, when you buy a Mac, you're getting little things that I find PCs don't have, like the speakers, which are. Mm -hmm. I haven't like I've reviewed a lot of laptops. Yeah. And I haven't heard speakers like that on a form factor this size. That's right. right? Yeah. I mean, there's big gaming laptops that have crazy speakers, but this size, there's yeah. nothing better, right? So like, there's a lot of little things where mm -hmm. I think the value's there, yeah. and people kind of 
forget that and all they do is kind of focus on the spec sheet, right? Mm. There's just so much more to it. Yeah. Like the engineering, the time, um, you know, that's put into this product mm -hmm. compared to like, you know, just slapping a couple of components that everybody's using in the PC market and putting something together. That's you true. Know? That's so there, there's always going to be a bit of a price difference. Okay, now I guess so for somebody who is still in the market looking for a laptop like this, what would you suggest is the best way to go out to specking this? Because I know you helped me quite a bit in, right. in figuring out how I should spec this. I was like, oh, I'm getting like the turbo <laughs> boost, I'm getting everything. And you're like, hmm, I don't know if that makes a difference. Right. And you explain that. So what would you say, I guess for let's say two categories, one is like an entry level pro who's just maybe just wants to start out right, and right. somebody who is a little more seasoned. So it depends on the type of uh, industry they're in. Like if you're a photographer, for example, yeah. um, you can probably get away with a MacBook Pro 13 for if you're like an amateur photographer. But if you are buying the MacBook Pro 15, you do not need any more than the base model. Like the i7, oh, yeah. 16 gigabytes of RAM is more than plenty. More than plenty yeah. Spend the extra money on storage space because mm -hmm. you know they offer different levels now, even though it's expensive, because that's something you can't replace in the future, right? Mm -hmm. um, videographers, you might want to go up. I mean, even for, for most videographers, even the i7 is more than capable, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would push it up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and then of course, select the amount of storage that you think is necessary. Like me personally, I use a lot of external drives, yeah. so I don't need the internal storage, but I know people who swear by just having the most internal storage as possible, this way you don't have to like transfer stuff, right? Yeah. So if that's you, then obviously spend more money on that. Now, no one, and I mean absolutely no one, should buy there's the more, the more expensive i9. There's two yeah. versions of them. The 2.3 and 2.4. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So the 2.4 is overclocked, and because these laptops are not capable of keeping those C CPU speeds high enough, mm -hmm. you'll never see the difference in performance. Yeah. You know, you might see it in like micro, micro applic like when you're doing micro um, processing, like really quickly, you might mm -hmm. see a bit of a speed difference. But if you're like rendering a file, yeah. or you're not going to see a difference. Like it's just not possible because those clock speeds don't ever hit the boost clock of those more expensive i9s. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. save your money put it towards more RAM or put it towards more storage, depending on the industry you're in. Okay, okay, fair. And in terms of graphics card, maybe max it out? Depends, depends. Photographer, do not do not buy the most expensive Radeon. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't yeah. make sense. Because yeah. for Photoshop, most of these programs are still very CPU based. Yeah. You're not gonna see any performance difference. And I think Adobe has not updated their applications to really utilize the GPU, at least for Photoshop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Premiere is a little bit, you're still using a lot of the CPU, but yeah. having a B for your GPU will help you out with your render times. So okay. if, if you're in Premiere, I think the four gigabyte 5500M is great for most. If you're doing Final Cut, mm -hmm. it's really GPU focused. So okay. you might want to go up to the more That's expensive not, yeah. eight gigabyte. And same with uh, DaVinci Resolve okay. as well. Yeah. Does DaVinci Resolve use metal as well? or like? They've... I'm not sure if DaVinci uses metal. I know Adobe Premiere does now, which is great. Oh, do they? Oh, that's yeah. already pushed that, through. That's why I'm actually using this Mac. Oh. That's why I bought it, because the okay. performance with metal on the Mac, even though like these NVIDIA yeah. laptops have better GPUs, yeah. is actually faster because of metal, depending oh, on what you're doing. Okay. Like if you're, if you're doing a lot of warp stabilization and yeah. you're doing a lot of effects, yeah. then yeah, having an NVIDIA GPU is so much better. Mm -hmm. But like if you're just like doing the basic YouTube stuff that I do and with the odd, you know, um, effect here and there, your typical effects, having the MacBook Pro is actually faster in terms of rendering times. It's interesting. Yeah, like I, yeah it's, it's, it's crazy. The optimizations they've done with metal, it's not normal. Yeah. yeah. And I guess the last one in terms of specs, like uh, RAM. Now I was, I was kind of tempted to go 64 GB, right. but I held back, I went to 32. Just fine. But what, who, would, who would you think would need like 64 oh, GB? Is that some somebody who maybe keeps a laptop for a long time? Someone or? who's using Google Chrome, I'm just joking. <laughs> It's got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, so 64 gigabytes of RAM, you're doing After Effects, yeah. really RAM hungry, you know? Mm. Like I got 64, I probably don't need it, but I don't know, I just have so many things open, I'm using Adobe Premiere. 32 yeah. is like enough, like for 99.9% .9 of people, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Solder onto the motherboard. If I'm keeping this for five years, I'm gonna go 64. But Fair most enough. people should be fine with either 16 or 32. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So I guess now to bring everything together, in your opinion, what do you to, in today's day and age, with all like the metal enhancements and everything with Premiere Pro, do you prefer to edit? And it's a difficult question. Yeah, of course. Would you prefer to edit on a MacBook Pro or would you prefer to edit on? A comparable Windows lab, Windows laptop. It's a tough question because like I really love customizing and building my own PCs. It's just like something to it. Like it's just mm -hmm. like a, a nice feeling when you create yourself. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it, in terms of laptops, I do prefer editing on a Mac, just because I like the variety. But um, if someone put a gun to my head and said, "Make me choose," I probably would still choose Windows. One thing I wanted to ask you. Um, 
which is kind of like, I don't know if it's a myth, but I've heard this like all my life. Right. And that is, people always say Macs are safer because they don't get viruses. They right. don't get yeah. all that stuff uh, versus with Windows, you get like malware every day. You get like, yeah. so So is that, is that true or do you, is that uh, It used to be true. Okay. Like there was a time where like, and, and it's, it's more so to do with the fact that like there was just wasn't as many people buying Macs, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was just less viruses being created for a platform that wasn't as, you know, supported as Windows at the time. Like Windows XP was just, I mean, yeah, at the time, like everywhere, everywhere right? Yeah. That's what you used. So yeah, it, you know, and Windows XP wasn't the best, you know, best programmed operating system. So yeah, you, you would get, the chance of you getting a virus on Windows was higher. Today, not so much. You know, it's pretty it's pretty even. Like maybe a slight adv advantage to the Mac operating system, but it's it's very, very small now. Like okay. I, I wouldn't say buy a Mac because you're gonna get less viruses these days because yeah. it's, it's totally changed. It's not like that anymore. Interesting. Okay, well, I mean, I mean that's, a, that's a good segue to talk about uh, the channel sponsor for today. Clean My Mac X is a multifaceted software which is designed to do several things including clean up your system so it will take out any system junk or look through your mail for redundant attachments and empty your trash bins whether it's in your mail app or your Mac or your photo library. It also looks through your computer for malware to make sure it's always protected and there's several different speed optimizations which helps you take control of the performance of your computer. And last but not least, my absolute favorite is in this drop down menu at the top right here, it gives you all the stats you need about your computer, including what apps are using up your battery, how much space you have left, how much RAM is being used up, and what is the load on your CPU currently. Also, Apple has notarized this software, which basically means that Apple has taken a deep dive into this application just to make sure that there's no malicious content or anything that is going to be harmful to us. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, then make sure you guys go ahead and check out the link in the description down below. They have a free trial as well that you can check out before you make your mind up. Thank you so much, Clean My Mac X, for being a sponsor of this channel, and now back to the video. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about the MacBook Pro, uh, 2019 16 inch. Um, bonus round. Uh oh. Bonus guess. round. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Mac Pro? Oh, I, knew was, <laughs> I knew this was coming. I knew it. Okay, so listen, I think it's an amazing product. I like the fact that Apple is finally, again, this is another year of Apple listening. I love the fact that they created a tower with upgraded components for mm -hmm. the production industry. But for those of you out there reading Twitter, following all your favorite tech YouTubers, do not get sucked into it. Do not feel like you need one. This is a product that's going to be bought by production houses who have the money to, per to buy it. As a YouTuber or video creator, this is, it's not a product that is worth it for us. It's just too much money. And like the differences you'll see from like a well spec iMac Pro is not that significant. Unless you're shooting in like, you know, 8K Red Raw or your MKBHD or something. But for 99.9% .9 of YouTubers, just buy a regular Mac or that's it. You don't, you don't need it. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing. I think yeah. I think they did a really good job. I'm curious to see more like Linus's video when he compares it to like yeah. something similar spec on a PC. That, that's that's pretty much what everyone's talking yeah. about, right? It's yeah. gonna come to, you gotta remember like the Mac Pro is using all Intel parts. Like this is stuff mm. you find in a typical PC, right? So it's yeah. not like they're, it's not like the iPhone where they're creating their own chip and designing it. So mm -hmm. whatever this computer does performance wise yeah. should either lose out or beat a similar spec PC. What's mm -hmm. gonna make the big difference though between the Mac Pro and let's say a similarly built PC desktop is whatever optimizations Apple do. You or know, like the afterburner. Metal's gonna be in there, stuff, yeah. the afterburner, the T2 chip for yeah. offloading. Like those little things mm -hmm. will determine how well it performs. Not the product, not, not the parts that are inside that are of inside. it because fair. that's standard PC stuff, right? That's fair. Exactly. Okay. Right. And any that's thoughts it. on the Pro XDR display? That is something, I, out of all the expensive stuff yeah. Apple released, that's one thing I'd want. Yeah, same it's here. It's beautiful. Here. Like that, yeah. I mean, you know, it's expensive, six, yeah. $7,000, but I mean, they are comparing it to like a Sony production monitor, which I know for a fact is there. I've seen those monitors like mm -hmm. personally and they're they're small, but like to have like a 32 inch, something that's not as comparable, like pretty comparable to it, to edit video on it. Ah, yeah. oh, beautiful, beautiful. Interesting, yeah. okay. Are you gonna buy one? Just I'm just gonna buy the <laughs> Mac Pro stand. That, <laughs> and I'm just gonna get Apple I've Care on it. I've seen your tweets on it. <laughs> you just trolling the internet. Well, I, my tweet got into GQ Australia. I saw that. I was I like, what? That. Wait, yeah. did they did they think it was real? Like, I, it was probably. Real? Okay. Yeah. I assume, you know, so many people messaged me like, Matt, yeah. are you real? I just like, of course, you know, like. Yeah. That one is whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, that pretty much sums it up. Um, I think I got a good understanding of the PC world and how this compares. So I just want to thank you. Thank you so much, Matt, well, for your time. Thank you for having really me on. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. And uh, yeah, definitely enjoyed this. Matt is somebody who's always down to help. So uh, I really respect him a lot. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. It. Thank you for having me on.
Appreciate it. Excellent. All in all, I really gotta say, this is one of my best business purchases this year. And as I ramp up for 2020, and I'm producing more content, putting more videos out, I can already see how much time, stress, and headache this laptop is saving me. It really allows me not to worry as much about the tools and to focus more so on the creative aspect of this job, which I love so much. Now, this machine is pretty much a powerhouse and I highly recommend it to anybody who is in the creative industry who needs something like a laptop to be the center of their entire workflow as it is mine. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and all the information and the entertainment and the interview and everything. And if you did, then make sure you guys go ahead and crush that like button. If you like content around tech, gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle, then make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And as usual, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. I think... Um I think, what was I going to say? I totally forgot. <laughs> okay, start again. <laughs> yeah. Segway to talk about uh, the channel sponsor for today. And then, dear Lord, so okay. really. <laughs> I was like, wow, what was fighting to prepare me for this? No, no. <laughs> <That's> Audible. <laughs> Yesterday I was reading this amazing book. Cool. Okay. Let's check and make sure this is okay, because I don't know. Like, I know, I mean, a recorder. I just want to make sure okay. it's in focus.